Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Manning Publications. If you use the discount code YTFisher at checkout, you'll get 40% off my Docker in Motion course. It is five and a half hours long and it teaches the fundamentals of Docker. Go to howtocowell.net forward slash Docker in Motion to get my course or other video courses and books from Manning Publications. Link in the description below. Hello, coders, and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today's episode is going to be a bit strange because this time I am under the spotlight. Hi, Jez. How, how's it going? Have you had a good week? It's going well, very well, thanks, mate. Um, I've had a good week, busy week. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's been good. What about yourself? Yeah, this has been a, a very busy one. Lots of uh, live streaming, lots of uh, planning of, uh, of presentations. I've got a talk next week. And um, yeah, just lots of lots of work, busy work here and there. But um, yeah. looking forward to the weekend, where I can edit some more of these things. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, yeah. So as you alluded to, we're going to go with a slightly different format um, this week for the uh, YouTube and the podcast. It's a bit of a takeover, and we're <laughs> going to. Well, it's my chance to turn the tables on you, and us to get a little bit and unpack your journey from starting in the industry way back when mm. through to where you are now and all the wonderful things you're doing at the moment excellent uh, so so i guess starting point would be um how did you decide to get into this industry and what was your route in right well um so when i was at school and i'm rubbish with dates so this was the either um sort of latter primary sort of start of secondary um i fiddled around with um basic um that was my first programming language and that i kind of thought that that was as dull as dishwasher water it was really sort of didn't really appeal to me whatsoever um and i kind of left that and then when i got to school um, at the end of school, we had the opportunity to go to A levels or university. Um, and we were given like this big UCAS book. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was with my parents and we were going through all the possible opportunities one could, would, could, could do with courses and stuff. Um, and none of them really appealed to me at all. I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. Uh, in the end, um, my dad, I believe, said that I hear that there's lots of money in IT. And I thought, I don't have money. Money's good. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I ended up, um, I ended up doing a, uh, ICE, it's called ICT. I don't think they do it anymore. It was an mm-hmm. ICT, uh, HNC, which is a higher national certificate. Um, yeah. and I did that for two years at, um, I think it was Chippenham College. I think, um, in Wiltshire, it was under the Wilts coal anyway. And that was a, that was an extremely varied, um, that was an extremely varied course. There was all sorts of things to do with, um, basically anything and everything to do with information communication technology. Um, programming was, was a section of that. Um, after that, uh, I went on to do a H and D of another two years. So that's a higher national diploma. And that was in BIT, which is business information technology. Um, we did everything from feasibility studies, uh, systems analysis to programming. And that's really where, uh, the programming started to kick off, uh, more, um, I also did accounting as well. That was an accounting uh, section in that course, which was so, so boring. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so interestingly enough, that was where I got my first freelance gig uh, when I was actually in college. And oh. it was my, the programming lecturer. And he, he uh, took me to one side and said, do you fancy building um, this e-commerce site for this person I know? And uh, I obviously said, yes. And, um, that was my first ever, uh, flavor taste of freelance, um, which was really, really cool. I I really dig that. Um, so, and then after that, uh, I went on to university. So, um, again, I didn't really know what I wanted to do in it. Um, so I chose a, uh, e-commerce and, um, multimedia degree. Um, at Gloucester University. That was a top-up degree 
because I did a H and D and a H and C beforehand. So it wasn't like a full, full blown sort of, um, I think it was a, a full blown four years. It was more like two and a bit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so that was, that was cool. We did a lot of animation in there, um, and web development. And then after that, I, um, I got a, a, a job in my, you know, the first ever job in web development at a place called Redder, um, which was so, so cool, really, um, such a good place to work. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much, pretty much, um, that, that sort of several years. <laughs> Wow. So, so your first, um, proper website development gig was actually an e-commerce site. Yeah. So yeah, it was, and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was a challenge because I only knew a very limited set of things because I was learning those things at the same time. So it was right in the deep end. Um, and I was basically trying to sort of, you know, learn as much as I can, as quickly as I can to mm-hmm. get this thing done. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, I've, I don't like saying no to things. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling very well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, but I've been, you know, I did when I was at uh, university, uh, one of my friends who went to, um, the same university before mm-hmm. I did, he, m- when he came out of university, he started working in a place uh, and they needed someone to write an application for them. Um, and uh, he, he called me up and said, I know you're at university, but do you fancy building the system? So I did. So I, I was doing that whilst I was at uni. Um, and then I did a bunch of other sort of micro sites sort of whilst mm-hmm. I was there. So I was building up my yeah. portfolio whilst I was learning. I was pretty much fake it till you make it kind of mentality. Um, and there was people like who would some, co- some people I, I knew at university who would come up to me and say, so how's business going, you know, rather than, yeah. you know, how, how was your night out? That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were, you were kind of bitten by the freelance bug quite quickly then from the sounds of it. Yeah. So my, um, I've got a background of people in my family who, who work, um, for themselves and, yeah. Uh, I've always grown up with uh, my dad working from home. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he he was uh, he was a teacher um, for a long part of it, but um, uh, for all the memories I've got, because this was like before I was uh, before I was a teen before I was like a teenager, he was like teaching, I think. But um, from all the memories of living there, mm-hmm. um, he was he's been self-employed. So, uh, there was, and there's always that sort of desire and that want to do that. Um, and, and yeah. And my sister, she is also self-employed and my brother does bits and pieces as well. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of that in my, in my family. Um, yeah. Kind of the natural environment you grew up in. It it feels unnatural to not do it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's fair enough. I mean, we'll we'll come on to that a little bit more mm. um, in a bit. So, with these with these first um, roles you were doing, what kind of um, languages and what stacks were you using? So, obviously, you've gone one one was e-commerce, mm. microsites, uh, an application as well that mm. you were building. So, quite different um, uh, products that you're you're working on. So, yeah. what what were the stacks like, and how did you? get into those technologies. Okay. So there's two, two things here. One is the stuff that I was being officially taught. And then the other one was the stuff I had to do because I was being paid for it. So the stuff I was being officially taught was things like, um, Java and, um, obviously HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, XML. There was, um, other bits and pieces to do with, um, you know, rest requests and all of that jazz, you know, the mechanics of things. And then the the stuff that I wanted, I needed to do, uh, was things like, um, um, there was PHP. So PHP is technically my self-taught thing. So I wasn't actually taught PHP in any of my, um, you know, courses or whatnot. Um, Mm -hmm. in fact, I went to one of my lecturers and I said, I know more PHP than I know Java. Please, can I do this in PHP? Um, and he said, yes. So, (laughs) so, so, because because I was teaching myself more PHP, 
PHP, then yeah. he, then I'm not saying that then he teach taught me Java, but I was understanding PHP far easier than he, than I was understanding Java. Um, yeah. it was a programming module. It didn't have any kind of like, sort of like remit of what language it needed to be. So I found that as a loophole. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we also at uh, college, we learned Oracle, um, and that was fun. That was sort of like got me into the databases kind kind of stuff. And then I taught myself, uh, my SQL, um, mm-hmm. which I've, which I use, uh, regularly. And uh, recently I've been doing uh, lots of other random bits and pieces, you know, um, yeah. for things like, um, uh, well, mostly, mostly Python, um, that's self-taught. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, in, in terms of, cause obviously you're, you're in quite a unique position there. So you, you're doing university, so you're actually formally learning, mm. um, is, yeah, Java, um, HTML, CSS, like you said, mm. and then alongside that, because of the freelance work you're doing PHP, um, as a, as a self-taught thing, mm-hmm. um, and obviously doing the job as well. So you're actually, um, programming, real world as opposed to just theoretically sure how how did the two compare um in your mm. mind in terms of i mean you've already said that you had approached your lecturer to ask if you could develop something in php because that was uh, the uh, the language you were becoming more comfortable with and more familiar with do, do you feel that the um that the the, the course um that were what you were being taught actually reflected real world programming or are the, are the two kind of distinct? Mm, that's a very, very good question. That's a very good question. So the stuff I asked to do for PHP was also because um, I was able to sort of do both the university, the, the, the course, as well as the project sort of mm-hmm. in tandem. Um, so I wasn't really thinking of, you know, one is better than the other, but in reflection, in hindsight, I think that um, they, they, so anybody can be a programmer and I'm not going to take that away. Like anybody who has the desire and the, the want to, and the hunger and the time, um, mm-hmm. can learn to code. However, I think that with university and courses, you do get some sort of foundation that one doesn't get when they are, when they're self teaching. There are things in the course that I wouldn't have taught myself because mm-hmm. I would have found them boring, but I needed to know, yeah. I needed to know them. Um, uh so and also the the element of networking like we had a guy in who came in uh i I remember and he was telling us how it is in the industry and you don't get that when you're doing a self being self-taught you don't have uh, someone you can speak to and say you know what is it actually like um so yeah i i think that there is um an argument for both i think Mm -hmm. that if anybody has the opportunity to go on a course they should do um but i think that you shouldn't think you shouldn't like go oh i don't have a degree so i'm not worthy to be called a developer that's that's not right in my in my eyes yeah I would have to say I have to second that being the self taught developer myself. So, um, but yeah, I, I completely uh, hear what you're saying there. Um, it's interesting though, because obviously you've got the advantage of having that perspective of both sides, whereas quite often you'll meet people who are either one or the other. So people who are self taught tend to say, ah, you only learn theory there. It's not practical. People who are to university, well, you learn how to do it properly and you make sure you don't miss things. So, um, yeah, I understand it having both of those um, is obviously uh, well, advantageous. The more you learn and understand, the better. Well, I, I can say one thing, and that is that having a degree helped me get a job. Um, yes. And I think without the degree, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm-hmm. Um, I could probably get to where I am today, but I would probably need to have a little bit more of a uh, something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so, um, you said, um, from you transition from university, obviously doing bits and pieces on the side, and then you transitioned into your first, uh, first job. So what, what was your, your first job and what sort of things were you doing? So, yeah. Okay. So this is where this is, um, just taking, checking on the timeline. This is, uh, we're now talking, I don't know, uh, 2008, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. 
this is uh, Redder, and this was an awesome team. Um, I actually started uh, the day after my graduation. Um, I had to take the graduation off as holiday, I believe, because I actually screwed up with the start dates, I think. Uh, <laughs> but that was, <laughs> yep. I don't know. Um, but that was, yeah, that's, it's a, it's an awesome team. They're still going. And, uh, I learned loads. Like that was just incredible. Um, yep. and you went from the, the fact of you think you know what you're doing and to, oh my God, this is real life. This is, this is the stuff that, uh, you, you're either going to make it or you're going to break it. And I broke a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was really good. I was there for about four years. Yeah. 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 And we were, we were building to answer your question. We were building the, um, we were building all sorts of sites. So it was a very mixed bag, e-commerce sites, um, mm -hmm. websites using frameworks. So cake PHP symphony. Um, I think there was some other, other PHP esque frameworks thrown in too. Um, yeah. and also we rolled our own, um, and uh yeah it was it was really really good really really good um it was such a an amazing experience to be in yeah. and uh, i still keep in contact with those guys and they're really they're really awesome <laughs> brilliant and uh so were they kind of a design agency or software house or what sort of business were they were rather themselves yeah so they're they're a digital agency um <laughs> and uh they like I said, they were at the time they were working on lots of different projects, um, and so you had you had lots of different things and challenges to work on. They also put me on training as well, which was so cool. So I, from university, I came away with some knowledge of creating games and doing a lot of sort of graphic work and stuff like that. So I was mm -hmm. actually um, I actually got better grades in the graphics than I did in the actual programming. All right, um, yeah. <laughs> And I thought that I would be more of a graphics guy. So I thought that I would be doing a lot of graphics stuff. But when I got to Redder, there was people there who could do the graphics far quicker and far better. And they could just, they had an eye for it. Sure. Um, but I still wanted to design things. And they saw that. And, and what, what they put me on was a, 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 a course that uh, taught how to design software. And you might think, well, why didn't you get taught that at university? Um, but this was like being taught software from the real world's perspective, yeah. um, which you don't get at university. Um, mm -hmm. You get like a small little remit that you have to sort of like follow. But this was like, uh, this is a everyday scenario. How are we going to architect it? So it's more of an architecture, architecture yeah. kind of uh, thing. It was only for a few days, but I came away from that really buzzing because mm -hmm. I was able to turn off my um, want to make things look nice to, mm -hmm. um, to design software in a nice way. I, I, that really showed me the difference between messy code and well-structured, well-organized architected code. Yeah. Um, and from that I took, I, I, I think I went on another course. It was kind of like a top up course on that. And yeah, it was, I think without that, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have that, uh, want to make, you know, um, code more clean and, and all that. So that was really good. Um, yeah. So that was Redder. And then from there, I went on to Fast Host. Yes. Which is where we first uh, crossed paths. Yeah. 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 That Fast Host was incredible because that really showed me the difference between um, a small uh, digital ag agency to a, a huge uh, company <laughs> with <laughs> many people. <laughs> Yes, and many, many um, the the other big because um, I when I when I arrived I was coming from being mainly one man band and small businesses, mm. and uh, you probably found the same. The difference between having to work on very tight, high pressure deadlines, lots of different things going on. To all right, we still had to we still had deadlines, but it was one product that we were dealing with it was one code base it was mm -hmm. it wasn't a fire and forget type no scenario no. was it so no it wasn't um and that was that was very different um from redder mm -hmm. because there was lots of projects to play with so yeah. and and lots of projects were written in a slightly different way mm -hmm. um because they had slightly different required major different requirements um whereas with with fh with fast hosts it was like you know 
it, it, it's the control panel and keeping the customers happy um, and and adding things to uh, to the services and stuff um, and the 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 actual um, the architecture of it was incredible to 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 just yeah I mean it was it was so good it was so good it was a it was a nice nice two years two and a bit years um, it, it opened my eyes up it, yeah. <laughs> It was it was a very professional team and um, and yeah and in, in terms of from your from from the way you like to work um, because obviously mm. again we've got two very different styles of um, uh, job there so you've got the digital agency which is lots of different things to work on mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's all done get it out the door fire and forget type development and then you've got the fastos where it's because it's a continuous product it's mm -hmm iterating it's building on what's already there it's keeping with the standard flow mm. and just continuous improvement as well as adding things on mm. what, what 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 what's your preferred or, or what fits with you better in terms of those styles of of work do you feel so yeah i mean one point i want to make is that with when i was with, with redder it was it wasn't it was not fire and forget i wouldn't say that it was more because we had we did have a client base that we were looking after yeah, yeah, but we were always looking for other clients, right? Because that's the, the the way it works. Yeah. Um, I I'm not sure. I, I that that is a very good question. It basically boils down to: Do you prefer to work on a system for a long time? To mm -hmm. do you want to? Do you prefer working on lots of different systems? Um, so I think they both have their pros and cons. Um, I've, I've worked on a particular system for the last three years, um, in the, in the freelance sort of space. And, uh, I know that like the back of my hand. Um, mm. so, and I feel very comfortable. You end up building a nice little comfort blanket, you know, around the thing. Um, and you become very quick and a snappy developer. That's nice. However, yeah. when you're working on different challenges, you, you, your, your thinking changes and broadens a little bit because you're having to think about different user journeys and different things. So I'm not sure what I would be more comfortable with. I'm not sure, uh, to be honest. That's a very, very interesting question. I think I'm going to have to go away and think about that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll better just caveat that being as I'm a digital agency myself. When I say fire and forget, I'm, what I'm talking about there is if you're doing landing pages, mm. marketing sites, mm. brochureware, and things like that, it is something that you do, you get it done, the client's happy, you get yeah. it out the door. Yeah. It's not something you generally tend to return to. No. Um, no from, from our experience, we have other um, systems that we are continually maintaining and yep. building on as well. So I can just clarify that for once <laughs> when I go into work next. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, so, um, so obviously, you, you know, as um, we cross paths at uh, Fastos and mm. uh, Jeff as well, who yeah. has uh, recently been on a podcast as well. Um, and yeah, uh, that I can completely agree with it. It was a whole new world. Um, yeah. So, so I thought I knew PHP before yeah. that, and then I realized I didn't. <laughs> I was in exactly the same boat when I arrived there as well, um, and not just that development as well. I mean, some of the some of the things we did and the way they did things, it's sort of like was a massive for me was a massive step change. Yeah, um, and I, yeah, the, the development practices themselves. And I, and I wasn't, um, I was never exposed to that level of um, sort of uh, structure in terms of business. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you have a team leader and then that team leader reports to another person and that person reports to another person. I never had that. That, that yeah. was, that was new. Um, and it was nice because you, you felt like you had, um, like a little family that you, you, mm -hmm. and it was a close family on a particular project. Um, and, but then that family was in another family and then that family was in another family and you were yeah. all sort of going down the, you know, walking the same path, right. You were heading in the same direction, but, um, yeah. And it was good. It was, it was nice. It was lovely. Um, I can always just remember the, the whiteboard wars. They were just so cool. I mean, that, that was brilliant. I was one of the best things about working there was these, um, yeah, like you said, all the walls were effectively whiteboard. So you mm. just walk up to any wall pretty much and draw. in the Clement suites yeah. and draw and draw and just draw on what you yeah, really needed. The same with the meeting rooms downstairs. Yeah. Half of those had just walls you could just write on yeah. uh, when, you were, when you were doing whatever you needs to. It was uh, a very good for collaboration. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 
yeah. it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, so you you got out of Fas- Fasos um, before I did um, mm. by a good uh, year and a half. So what was what was the next step then in your career? Because was that when you started to do a bit more freelancing? So I was freelancing with Redder whilst I was with FH. Yeah. Uh, so so after I left them, they they asked if I could continue on, you know, um, in in the mm-hmm. weekends and evenings. So I I did, um, because you know I don't like saying no and everything. So that still continued. And then after I left Fast Hosts, I moved to a company called Agrantech, um, which was completely remote um and oh, yeah. that and i've been remote ever since yeah um that was in 2012 uh mm-hmm. ish and uh that was very good um it was yeah it was awesome we had so many different challenges it was a, it was um i wouldn't say it was a startup but it was like um it was a small uh, group of developers and um designers um, and we had other freelancers and, and, and stuff on as well. And we were, we were building, uh, mobile apps as well as PHP applications. So that, right. re- that, 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 uh, exposed me to writing mobile applications. Um, so I built my first mobile app with them. Um, yeah. I actually built several with them. Um, and we built the APIs and the back end and all of mm-hmm. that stuff. Um, we also did other, other sort of projects, um, which weren't related to our core business, uh, but we, you know, and and I was put on those things as well. Um, mm-hmm. And then after a grand tech, uh, I did some freelance with them too. <laughs> <laughs> so you've um, with quite a few businesses, and you picked up freelance work as you've um, well as, as you uh, wait goodbye as it were. Well, well, one thing I would say to anybody who's listening to this is is if you are considering freelance, go full time first because you're not going to get the the size of network as quickly as you would if you go full time. Um, uh, So you're you're building up a a pool of people who know how you code, who know how you think, and you know how they think and what they need and their requirements. That is a job in itself when you are a freelancer looking for a new client. That Mm -hmm. is done for you naturally as you're working there. Um, So so yeah, if you want to go f- a freelance, go full time. <laughs> <laughs> full time employed first. <laughs> yeah, it seems counterintuitive, but I, it, I can it, completely, it, I completely understand what what, what it what is right. It, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make sense, but it it um, from just saying it, but uh, it, it certainly has. I mean, I'm reaming off, I'm reaming off places I've worked full time, and then saying I've had them as a freelance clients too. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> And it's it's getting part of it is getting um, it's, it's also getting the experience as well mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. by doing the full time you've got other colleagues to you know to to learn from and to work with to help mentor you um, for you to help mentor as well and, yeah. and develop all those sort of skills plus those skills that sometimes fall outside of yes. like yeah. sales yeah. business admin things like that because you you build up a network of people even if it's just talking at the water cooler as it were or, yeah. Yeah. the Christmas party or wherever it may be. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and yeah, I mean the, the, uh, the, the networking side is just so huge. Um, and you don't, you don't realize you're doing it, but you're doing it. Yeah. Um, uh, and one point I want to make though, is that uh, none of these places that I've worked at and, and there's more, um, I, I hope, well, from my point of view, I haven't left, I haven't left burning a bridge, you know, I've no. always left the door open and I think that is so, so important to do. Um, in fact, all of these places, I really was struggling to justify leaving because they were brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've been compl- I, again, um, particularly, you know, in terms of Fasos, which is our chaired mm. um, employer, I can completely understand that as well. It is, uh, particularly when you're working with such high caliber um, colleagues, it's you know, it, it, is, it can be difficult to yeah, uh, yeah. to say goodbye. But yeah, definitely the burning bridges is is is, is a very important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just just going back to to something you said just now in terms of the your, this was your first exposure to mobile applications. Mm-hmm. Um, were you doing native or hybrid or what sort of stack were you doing? How did you get to grips with? what was again a different product that you were building so 
involves a different style of development. And yeah, so we, thinking even. Yeah, so um, we, um, so so they when I started, they didn't have any mobile apps. I don't think, um, or if they did, it was it was quite small. So mm-hmm. they were still in that process of discovering themselves. So I was part of that discovery journey. Um, and we used a, a suite called App Accelerator, which compiles down to both Android and iPhone. So in a, in a native way, but we were using um, Alloy JS. It's a JavaScript framework to write the, yep. the applications. Um, and uh, and so we, we ended up building a suite or plugins, if you would like to call it that, where we could just sort of like add in the authentication layer that we had already created for the other app. And we ended up modulizing our, our applications, um, which was so cool. Yeah. Which was so, so cool. Um, yeah. Um, so you didn't have to go down the route of, route of learning um, Swift or um, Objective-C or anything like that. You were able to no. utilize your JavaScript skills just in a different, um, in a slightly different way. So I, I've always looked at the uh, documentation because you can only do so much with these these cross-platform thingies. Sometimes you have to delve into the into the under the bonnet, as it were, and it's scary. Um, I I have no desire to go that far. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, but the thing is, right? What you can do these days with the PWA is crazy. So yeah. I mean, there's some things that um, perhaps if we were to do if the, if you know, if I was to do a mobile app now, I would probably consider just not actually using um, or, or having a, something in an app store, just building a website and, and yeah. parceling up as a web, uh, as a mobile app. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve. It's, of course. Uh, yeah. Of course. You know, I've, I've been part of two um, using uh, myself for exactly the same reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, so what was what was your next step then? Bearing in mind that you're you're now doing mo- you've now done some mobile development as well. Still yep. doing your freelance stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shooting yep. you um, as you moved on, you started doing freelance um, for for them as well. Uh, yes, um, and then I. I I worked at a place called um, well I was a freelancer a, a subcontractor for uh, a, a place called Clock Clock Digital Solutions and I was building a mobile apps using the same technology Accelerator mm-hmm. uh, I also helped build their some of their uh, websites using Laravel um, and um, yeah that was actually an interesting uh, conversation uh, because they tried to. They sent out a, a sort of a marketing thing saying, um, "Do you want graphics designers?" Because they knew that you know they they obviously found my my company name on some list somewhere, um, and so they thought that I was a, a an established business. Uh, so I called them up and said, <laughs> and said, um, uh, "No, I don't need a graphics designer. Do you need a mobile app developer?" <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Marketing to the marketers. I love it. And, uh, and yeah, and, and the, the rest is history. So. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so you were, you were subcontracting out yeah. to them. So yeah. you were, that was, so at that point you were kind of almost completely freelance uh, because obviously you weren't directly employed by them. You were. Yeah. Um, so, so throughout this journey of stuff, um, there's, there's, you can, you can imagine if you, if you see, if you think of like all these plates and they're spinning, I'm just mm-hmm. adding another plate to the end of the row and trying yeah. to keep that them all sort of on top. It, it, and this is coming to the boiling point where I had to sort of draw a line and go, you know what, I, I, I can't physically, mentally do freelance in the weekends and the evenings and the early mornings. I'm seeing too many days twice, you know, yeah. for, for me to, to do this. Um, so this is sort of where we sort of draw the line and go full time freelance. Uh, but I guess, I mean, looking back on it now, I was doing f- two full time jobs at this, mm-hmm. at this point and yeah. entwined in all of this is YouTube. <laughs> yes. Something I was, um, we I definitely wanted to come on to shortly. Yeah. So, 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 th- so, you, so basically the, the way you, your progression then has been, mm. um, Building up, and while you've been doing full time jobs, evenings and weekends, building up that client base yeah. for the freelance work until 
not not even necessarily so much of a conscious decision, but it was a tipping point where it was one of the one of these has to give. It was a necess- necessity. Yeah. 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 And then, um, and so you went with the option of going down the freelance route. Mm-hmm. Um, is is that kind of where uh, has that been sort of the the, the rest of um, what you've done, or have there been any other? Um, sort no, of that, that's pr- that, no, that's pretty much pretty much where. I mean, we're now what uh, 2018, so we are very yeah, and then the, the, well 2016. I, I think. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I've been, I've been a, a contractor full time ever since stroke consultant. Um, it depends on what cl- client it is and various, yeah. various people um, all over the world, actually. Um, some in Texas even. And um, we, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it just, it feel, it feels like a natural progression. <laughs> it, it, well, it, it certainly sounds very organic. Yeah, uh, which is I think how these things tend to go, don't they? And, uh, yeah, some people do have a they've got a set plan. I'm going to do this, do this, do this, do this. Mm. But I tend to find, you know, from my you know, experience as well, if you do it organically, it tends to just mm-hmm. work, mm-hmm. and you can adjust and adapt. And mm. like you said, when you were going full freelance, we've discussed this on a previous podcast. Um, um, when we were talking about peer setting and that you did, mm. you know, you made sure you made steps to do that transition. Sure. It sounds like it was also, it was kind of an, an inevitability about it as you built up this freelance client base anyway, that you were going to have to do that at some point. Yeah. So, yeah. So I always wanted to be a freelancer. That's, that's, that's yeah. the end, end of the line. That's the, that was what I wanted to do by hook or crook. That's, that's what I wanted to, to do. Um, yeah. And I've never been great at sort of planning ahead in terms of like, this is what I want to do in five years time, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I, I make it, I make, I take the decision out of my hands. I, I, I force myself to do it. You yeah. know, it's sort of like um, I can't physically do the other thing anymore, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 sometimes it's it, life does make up your mind for you um so mm. yeah you've got you know well i'm now i'm at a crossroads now i've got two choices this is what i've wanted to do mm. we'll go down this route yeah 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 yeah, yeah. fantastic and yeah like, like you said the, the youtube thing um has probably been going on for a lot longer than most people realize I'm yeah talk- it's been going on for several years um incredibly long time and it is all by complete and utter accident. <laughs> I was going to say, so how did you, how did this come about? Um, because obviously people, the they're, they're regular listeners and viewers will know where you are now um, mm. and uh, the sort of thing you do now. But how, how, what, what, what drove you to YouTube in the first place and how did you kind of get the ball rolling? On? Okay, so I'm probably going to get shattered for this, but uh, very selfish reasons. Um, the, I, so going all the way back to, to finishing university, I, um, I was on various phone calls to various recruitment agents. One of them said to me, um, just off the cuff remark, he said, you're in a pool, you know, in not so many words, but he said, you're in a pool of other developers with the same talent. I wish there was a way that you could show me on sh- and show my prospective clients what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. And I went away with that thinking, hmm, if there was only a way I could show you. So I, I created a, a a couple of videos. I think it was four videos on my SQL. I don't know why I chose, chose my SQL. I have no idea. Um, and it was, I, I I don't know why, but I just kind of went into this sort of training teacher mode. Um, and we did it for, I think four or five, as I said, I uploaded them and then I forgot all about them. I added them to the CV. And I have no idea whether or not any of the uh, people who I sent the CV to saw them. And I forgot about them for several years, several, several years. Um, It was only until, um, it was only until someone asked me, can you do a video of some of my products? Um, and the, the, the question was, where do we, we put this? And I thought, well, I've got a YouTube channel that I created ages ago. I d- dug out my old password. I hadn't, I seriously did not go on YouTube for years. Yeah. And then as soon as I got on there, I saw all of these lovely comments saying, where's the next 
episode. And so my brain, uh, and, and also a whole bunch of questions about what I had, had taught. So my, my, my brain shifted from a very selfish, this is what I'm going to do pr- to promote myself mm-hmm. to, um, this is actually, you know, there's a need for this. There's a, there's a, there's a want, there's a desire. I'm actually teaching people. I didn't think I would be teaching anybody. Yeah. So, uh, and then, and then I went away and I thought, well, I, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this properly or as properly as I think I can. Um, so it was, uh, another, I think it was a, another six month stint where I didn't put anything on, but I was planning it. So mm-hmm. then I finished that, uh, my SQL thing. And, and then I actually started drawing up a schedule. So it was complete, but completely accidental, totally accidental. This whole thing has just been a complete accident trip. Yeah. Yeah. And everything um, else from that has, since then has been accidental too. There's not, not really been, um, I think recently there's been more of a plan, but I think, mm-hmm. um, like, uh, most of it has been asking the community what they would like and judging yeah. what they want. Um, and, and doing that. So like, for example, there's lots of things that if you were to watch all of my videos, you would probably come away with some sort of picture of, of a developer that I am, but you would be missing a lot of pieces because it's, it's, uh, it's not a true reflection of the skills that I have. It's the skills that I have, but I've got so much more that I've picked up. And I, I don't mean to, you know, blow the trumpet, but it's, it's more geared towards the, the need of the audience rather than what I would like to p- demonstrate. Yeah. So, it, it, so yeah, it's very much based on giving people the understanding and yeah. obviously, you, you, you know, with the how to code well and things like that, you, you're targeting helping beginners, you know, get into coding and to, and that's so, so you've obviously got to take it down to, this is how you, you do it in the beginning. And not necessarily talk about whether or not you're using the adapter pattern or whether you need the SARDs and what, what tech you're going to, you know, what stack you're going to build out to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all the rest of it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, like I said, it's becoming more planned now, more sort of scripted mm-hmm. and architected now. Um, but in the beginning it was, it wasn't, and there's, there was several years where it was just dormant. Um, yeah. And it was only because I logged in and I, I, I noticed all of these comments, these lovely comments from people that I just didn't think I would ever have. Um, you know, some of, some of them were really sort of like, you know, where's the next one? Where's the next one? It was, it was yes. so nice to see. Um, and, but I did it purely for selfish reasons. It was an advert. It was, you know, and I called it how to code well, because, uh, the agent said, I wish there was some way to show me how well you can code. And I thought, hmm, <laughs> okay, we'll do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> And I, I've never said that I'm a, gr- I, I've never said, and I never will say that I'm a great programmer and I'm not, I do not want anybody to think that, um, they can learn my stuff and come away thinking that, you know, be an expert in this thing. It's, I'm not out for perfection. I'm out for teaching you how to code well. It's the good practices that I would like to, to demonstrate, um, uh, not sort of purest perfection. It's um it's interesting because it's um I know it's it's something you've mentioned before in terms of um your live streaming that you do, yeah. uh, which obviously is 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 now a part of the how to, the whole how to code well ecosystem. Yeah. Um, but it's when you spend you know when you say right well, I'm going to show you how to do this and then you spend the entire thing debugging. That's yeah. real life. That's how yeah. you know that that skills that you do need as yeah. you co- come into this industry. Yeah. It's you yeah. don't sit down and straight away bang bang bang. I've just written you know I've yeah. just written uh, an app or a you know an API or whatever it is. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of trial and error mm-hmm. that goes on um, yeah. in this industry anyway. Yeah. When you're working and and seeing that and building up from that, these are sk- key fundamental skills anybody needs definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, with the YouTube, that, that kind of, that's, that started off with the, and I vaguely remember these MySQL, um, my MySQL tutorials when, when they first surfaced, um, strangely enough. Um, but that, that's kind of spawned into you, you know, you know, you've covered, um, things like Docker, uh, PHP, Python is another string mm-hmm. you, you've, you've added to the, to the bow on there. Um, but this has generated interest from, um, some, um, publishing 
um, yeah. or generated interest from publishers as well. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of um, sparked your collaborations with Packet and Manning, I believe. Yeah. So, um, so uh, Manning noticed that I was doing some Docker um, stuff and asked me to do a Docker course. Uh, I had never done one of these before. Like, um, so I shouldn't say that. So I've, I've done courses on YouTube, but this is like a completely different thing. This is like, uh, you know, this is studio level grade stuff. This isn't like, you know, yeah. s- someone mumbling around on a, on a, on a YouTube video. Um, it went through s- a series of vetting processes. They were so, so good with re- the review process. It also went out to, uh, Docker developers to review, which was scary as anything, but you know, that was <laughs> cause Docker is self-taught, you know, I sort taught myself yeah. that. Um, and uh, Pact, um, they got in touch and asked if I could do some Python courses and other courses, I should say, um, will be hopefully added to that, other technologies, I should say. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, so we've been doing we've been doing some Python on that too. Um, these courses are they, they are completely different from the YouTube stuff because they, like I said, they go through a, a review process. You have to script them, you know, storyboard them. It's um, yeah. it's very clean. There's no mistakes, um, which some people like, some people don't like. Um, they're mm. they're not like the live streams one bit. <laughs> 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 but um yeah yeah it's 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 yeah. it's uh it's good it's it's a nice uh nice thing to do and it's yeah. nice to give back to the community as well um on yeah. that front yeah definitely yeah. um i think it's and then that's the interesting thing and that's that's the the the, the debate that i've seen um a lot um in terms of these things is it's that difference between you've got the professional so the commercial courses mm-hmm. that are scripted everything's tested beforehand, everything works perfectly, um, no mistakes. And then you've got the live stream, which shows you how it is in real life, Mm -hmm. where you you think everything is perfect, and then all of a sudden you've got a bug because of something that either you considered or even just a typo or a difference in, you know, if you're on Windows machine as opposed to Linux machine, all of a sudden it's case sensitive and things like that. So it, it is that learning that... People don't code perfectly for off the bat. No. It is, you know, there is that. And, and there is definitely a place for both. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was terrified when I started live coding because, um, you know, you, you, you had put, I had put all of these courses out, um, both on the YouTube too, and it, they were very clean. And if I was to, if I made a mistake in the recording, I would leave a little gap and then I would pick that up on the waveform and that would be where I would cut it and I would repeat, you know, and, and when I was doing the Manning and the Pact stuff, um, there was literally sentences I would be repeating again and again and again. So for like a 10 minute little thing, it would be perhaps an hour or so worth of footage to, to, to break down. Uh, and then that needed to go to review. And then half the time they would come back and say, please, can you pronounce this differently? Um, and I was picked up on things like data and router, router and all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But with, with the live streams, um, it's like there's more of them watching than you coding. So they can see the bug quicker than you can. Um, yeah. So, and also you're having to juggle looking at the, chat keeping the chat engaged thinking about how you're solving this issue that you've just created um and and also constantly talking because nobody wants to tune into a live stream where it's just seeing one person just writing code and not speaking so it's 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 a very different um different piece of content yeah it's actually quite tiring (laughs) I can imagine that must be very mentally yeah. um, exhausting doing that mm. because you've got, you know what it's like when you're coding and you get in the zone, it's all like you're, just, you're razor focused just on what you're doing, but to context switch quite so much. Yeah. It's when someone asks you a question and I love this. I love this. I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's just, yeah. you know, if you get asked a question that is not related to what you're working on, mm-hmm. um, you, I mean, as a streamer, you, you, you have to answer the question. <laughs> Yes. You can't ignore the audience. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, grinding gears, isn't it? When you're suddenly going from oh, switching to that and switching back is mm. it's very different to to what a day to day developer would normally be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's a good skill to have, though, definitely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that's that's kind of led into um, so you, you've got um, as well as your freelance work, you've got your you know the courses that you're doing, mm. the YouTube um, where you've been doing lots of tutorials and things like that, and that's kind of segued nicely into the podcast which obviously um we're recording one at the moment um obviously youtube and podcast so you know we're covering both yeah there. yeah how, how did that come about because again you've gone from just you know just just doing the the, the 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 tutorials and things like that to you know to something that's again very different from yeah yeah so this is a total accident again this is a absolutely accidental uh so i i started um ranting on youtube about various things good practices and all of this stuff and then people started asking questions um about things that i couldn't answer um because it wasn't you know i wasn't skilled enough to know so i ended up having to do a lot of research to answer their questions and stuff and also um I noticed because you know you got to look at the analytics and keep keep uh, keep the, the the rudder straight um, with with YouTube and try and ch- chase their algorithm changes every five minutes. Um, I noticed that the long form content was doing really uh, badly because I had so much short form content and so watch time was being dropped because if someone mm-hmm. is used to watching a ten minute talk on a tutorial and then you suddenly yeah. upload an hour long video, you know and only people are watching 10 minutes of that hour long video, YouTube are going to mark you down. So I thought, why don't I venture into podcasts? Because this is a different form of um, content consumption. Yes. Um, and I was umming and ahhing as to whether or not to create a new YouTube channel specifically for the podcast. Uh, but I thought, no, because that's another thing I need to juggle you know, that's another thing. So the podcasts on YouTube don't, then they're, they're not as, um, they're not as popular as the podcasts on in audio. I still put them up because I still think they are, you know, the valuable content, but it got to a point where I was not able to answer questions because it was going above and beyond my knowledge. Uh, mm-hmm. and I thought, why don't I get people on to answer these things? You know, um, and I, it, again, it's, it's sort of like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's a, an avenue into other passions. So I'm not just specifically talking to PHP developers or Python developers. It's, it's anybody and everybody who, who has a passion for web development and, and is, um, doing something really good and interesting with web dev. And also I love speaking to developers and learning how they actually got into the industry because everybody has a different development story and everybody can learn from everybody else. So, um, and having the platform to allow people to talk about that is great. So it's not like I'm just chasing the big names, you know. No, no, no. I've, I've, <laughs> that, that, that's for sure. I mean, you've had me on, so you know, <laughs> I'm not going after big names. Um, unique names, maybe. Um, any, anybody wondering about that? You just need to look at my surname. <laughs> but, uh, but so, so, so yeah. So, um, so you kind of. Um, how did you go about just? getting the whole thing started though because obviously you know you, the, the, one of the key things you then need is people to talk to to mm. be able to record these things so yeah. how, how do you how did you and how do you go about doing that if you don't mind me asking spamming people <laughs> no it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's no so um uh, uh so going to conferences is really good because you can ask mm-hmm. the speakers to to uh, come on it's mostly through twitter mostly face to face and a bit of email yeah 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 but organizing the podcast is something that uh, is a challenge that i didn't think was going to be this big (laughs) (laughs) because, because not only am I, well, I'm forcing myself into a schedule because every Friday there is a podcast. So that has to happen. Plus um, you you have to have a, um, you know, a a backlog of, of, of people on, because if some reason something went wrong um, or if you just went on holiday, you know, you need, you need to have something there. So I have the schedule, um, so it's a way of forcing me to be more organized, um, which has been, which has been really good. And that's filtered through to the YouTubes and the Twitches stuff as well. Yeah. Um, something that, um, I'm, I mean, I 
full disclosure, I do listen to the podcast every week. Um, <laughs> Thank so you. Ge- generally on my drive home on a Friday. Oh, uh, it's, it's brilliant that you've started doing it at lunchtime because it's always there for me to listen to. Oh, that's Friday. great. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's, that's a big thumbs up from me on that. Awesome. Score. Um, but one of the things that is that definitely comes across um, from those, um, and I think kind of feeds into a lot of the other YouTube type stuff that you're doing is is your interest in people. Um, like you said, you're fascinated by people's stories and how they got into it, but also just general technologies and you know other things they're doing. Um, so the people you've, you've talked about um, in terms of uh, Cobar. Um, mm. and the you know the the various other um, things that, that you've done um, and this real um, mentoring vibe that, um, that that comes across with with all the social stuff that you're doing where does that come from wow that's a really good question where on earth what what am i doing <laughs> um so <laughs> okay i i i so Okay, I'm a PHP developer um, mostly, and PHP is something that I wasn't taught at university. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was taught it at, I think, a, a college module, I think, but most of it self taught wise was um, over forums back in the day. So you, you have to appreciate that this was before Facebook, before any of the social media stuff. You can just go onto Twitter and ask a question because uh, mm-hmm. Twitter didn't exist. Um, so it was using forums and forums um, really, you know, you could provide code and they could give you feedback. Feedback would probably be about a day late, but you know, you needed, you know, it was a, um, it was there. Um, yeah. And there is so many people I want to thank, but I don't know who they are who's helped me get to this point. Yeah. So that's kind of my drive. I want to have the platform that people can come and learn. <laughs> so kind of paying it forward for all the, yes. the help yeah. you got when you were yeah. starting out in the industry. Yeah. And also all the help I got from, from, um, you know, you guys at fast hosts and people at redder and everyone at Grand tech and all the people I've worked with who've, yeah. who've, who've just been able to, uh, help me with certain problems and they could have just walked away. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it, I, I, um, I think if you can teach someone to do something and you, you, it, it, not only it justifies that your, your own knowledge, Right. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it kind of, um, it, it's such a good feeling. It's such a good feeling to do. It's a feeling yeah. more than, it's a feeling better than finance. It's a feeling better than, um, than, than lots of other things. If you can see that someone is doing well because you of the advice that you've given and the help that you've given. I mean, the amount of amazing comments that I get from people saying that, you know, that, that they've finally got a dead first job because they had listened to such and such or watched such and such on the How to Code Well channel is amazing. So yeah. this is why I do it. This is how, this is why I continue. Um, uh, and um, uh, it's not a case of chasing the numbers. It's not like, you know, I, there, there hasn't been many things that I've done just to get followers and viewers and, and subscribers. It's more to do with such and such has asked me this question. I'll do a video on that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, help people. Yes. Yeah. 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 Help, help other people get on in this industry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sounds really good. Um, it, it's interesting you know, in terms of the that feeling you get when you help people succeed and what have you. Um, I was asked um, a while ago now um, in, in you know in terms of you know career and things like that. You know where I am now. What 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 when I look back, what what am I proud of? Um, you know what yeah. what I see as an accomplishment. Yeah. And it's it's the team and the people that um, you know I've managed to mentor and bring on. And when you see someone standing on their own two feet and doing things for themselves, it, it's almost like being a proud parent. You it, think, yeah, you know, sure. So you know, I mean, really getting on. One, one example I can give, because I also do um, t- f- f- um, face-to-face teaching as well. I've been employed to, to, um, to teach classes of people to code. And um, I taught someone how to write their first web page. And the, 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 
I mean, I taught a lot of people the first web page, but this particular person was, um, she was so against it. She was like, she, she kept saying that she couldn't do it and then she did it. And it was like, it was such an, a, an amazing moment. It was like, you can do it. You've done it. This is, and, and therefore you can do other things. And then what happened, which was so, so awesome to see was, um, cause this was over a few days. Um, the, the next following day, they were talking amongst themselves and they were helping each other based on the knowledge that I had given them the prior day, the day before. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were fixing each other's bugs and that was it. I was basically just sat sort of like stood at the back of the room, just watching them become coders. And it was yeah. brilliant. It was like, yeah. I, I enabled this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Help them take their first steps. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Start them up on the journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely fantastic. That's, that's brilliant. Um, that, that, I think that, that covers most of um, what you've, um, or how you've got to where you are now. Mm. Is there anything else that we're unaware of? Any other side projects that you maybe are able to talk about or not that, uh, that you're working on? Or are there any other streams to your bow that people may not know about? Um, well, uh, there's a couple of things from the, of the how to cope well channel that is they're in the pipeline. Um, I'm not going to talk about them yet. Uh, I'll be, uh, I'll announce them in the regular channels, but, um, yeah, I want to really f- sort of focus on. So, so the, the, the goal, I guess, is to do this full time. Mm-hmm. And in order to do this full time, there needs to be some things put in place for yeah. that to happen. Yeah. Um, I don't want to use the monetization word, but there is, unfortunately there, there would need to be an element of that. And I've, I've tr- sort of, I've been playing with that in the sense that there's been sponsors coming on. Um, but I really want to stand on my own two feet. Um, and there's been many, uh, occasions where I've wanted to walk away from this because mm-hmm. it's too much work for what I get. Uh, finances is not, it isn't great in terms of the how to go well channel. I do it not because of the money. Uh, I do it because of the community. And this is something that I would really like to build uh, mm-hmm. a, a bigger thing. And I think with the podcast, the live streams and the, the channel and the, the courses and stuff, you know, it's a nice sort of triangle that I'm attacking a three pronged yes. approach. Um, yes. yeah. Yeah. So things, uh, might happen maybe yeah. in the future <laughs> in terms of a community, a bigger well, community maybe, but we'll yeah. see. <laughs> how, how do you manage with, um, because all, obviously technically these are all side projects. Mm, um, they you are. have day to day freelance, which you need to yeah. you know, pay the mortgage, pay the bills and the rest of it. How do you, how do you, how do you structure your time? I know this is something you kind of touched on with mm, Jess mm, um, it, the other day, but it sounds like you got, you, you get a lot um, done in a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to lie. I do see the same day twice, uh, a lot of the times, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but, um, so social life is pretty non-existent and the, uh, evenings and mornings are pretty much taken up. So that's really where I do. I, I use a bullet journal to keep all of my notes and, um, to, to schedule things. I know what I need to do. Um, in order to get a podcast out the door, I I've learned a lot of ways to do things more efficiently now. So there is a lot of things that you can do in batch, uh, to get out the door. And, um, I, I would love to hand a lot of this over to someone in sense of editing and, uh, audio, because the, they are the areas that take a lot of the time up. You know, I, I would much prefer just to create the content rather than actually faff about with the audio levels and, and stop sounding like a Dalek, you know, so, so or in the bathroom. So, yeah, if I could, you know, that would be a goal to, so to give this to some audio engineer. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and then that sort of, that enables me to, to do more stuff, more content. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of breaking it up into time, um, you time box things. The freelance is the first thing that that uh, is the biggest priority, right? Because that that is the thing that puts them the food on the table. You can't, you cannot drop that, um, mm. and you can't 
um, you can't have one bleed into the other, right? So, so when I'm working on how to cope well, you can't do the freelance. You can't do the freelance when you do the how to cope well. So you have to be very clean and, and cut. Yeah. So you designate, you, you, some people designate weekends to play golf. I designate weekends to edit, encode and edit and stuff. There is always a video encoding. There is always uh, a video uploading. I have my, I've got my own sort of system where I do all the encoding and stuff, which is not the same system as I do all my freelance work on. It's, it's mm -hmm. separate. Um, yeah. that, that's really good because it separates the two. Um, yeah. but there's always something in a queue doing something overnight. Um, and yeah, that's just, that's just the way it's, it's gone. <laughs> wow. Do you, um, do you have, um, so, because that, that's an interesting point because I know certainly, um, in terms of working remote as well, um, mm -hmm. you probably experienced this. I've done small stints of remote work, not uh, full time, but for me, um, I found that having a specific area that was for that thing. So yep. remote working or something else helped you get that mindset right. So yeah. you go into office, whatever it might be, it might even just be a specific desk in the corner of the room. That's your work area. So that gets you in the work mindset. Mm -hmm. And then see so move to another part of the house and that's your you know your leisure time or whatever it might be. Is that something that you do yourself as well? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. So this office that I'm in here is is nothing to do with the house. I mean it's in the house, but it's got nothing to yeah. do with it apart yeah. from the heating and the, and everything. But you know, it's, it's, um, you, so when I started doing uh, remote, um, I didn't have any of this set up. Right. So I, I was working on the sofa, I think it was for, 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 for the first stint. Then we scrapped the spare room and, uh, in, in the house we were at the time and we got a desk. That was the first purchase. And then a chair, um, and, yeah. uh, and then that was it. That was my room. Um, and you know, we moved to this house and there is my room and there is, um, you know, a, a plan to perhaps, you know, have another area specifically for how to cope well to break, yeah. break the two. Um, yeah. because even though I said that there is like a d d distinction between the two, it is mm -hmm. still this room. And I think you need to have that sort of physical barrier. Uh, but I would hope that at that time I would be doing how to cope well full time. So, yes. So you just switch, uh, yeah, yeah. much like going full time to freelance. Mm -hmm. You just get to that tipping point where that then becomes the primary. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of like, I think I will always be a consultant. I think I'll always have that sort of ability to go in and consult people and talk to people and, <laughs> and uh, advise them. But I think I've come to a point in my career where I want to be building products for myself and for the community rather than for other people to make them money. Yeah. Um, you know, I've made a lot of, in my career, I've made a lot of people, a lot of money. Um, and, um, and I've worked on projects that, um, that I wouldn't work on if I was to work on it myself. Right. So yeah. Um, I would like to spend that time building the community and, and building, uh, a, a platform for them to come and learn. Um, and, uh, and part of that is the podcast. Part of that is the live streams. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. Brilliant. So, um, there is a question that you always <laughs> ask everybody at the end of the podcast now. Um, so as this is still a takeover, um, I guess we're going to have to throw that question back to you. So if you could tell the younger you, um, something, um, about getting into this, um, this industry, it could be more than one thing. You always say that, mm. uh, what, what advice would you give younger self? So what would you tell young Pete? Okay. So there's a couple of things, um, technical and non-technical. I think the non-technical ones would be if, um, someone asks you, if you ask a question and someone gives you an answer, if you don't understand that answer, swallow your pride and ask again. Um, this is something that I, so out of university, um, sorry, when I was at university, um, there were certain things and this is, this might sound like I'm blowing my trumpet again, but there were certain things that I was kind of like the go-to on certain aspects. Yeah. Um, you know, 
And that felt really nice and comfortable. There was lots of other people who were go-tos for other things as well. Um, yeah. And when you come into the industry, when you come into the industry, you have no idea how the industry works because you, you know, you, you haven't had that experience unless you've done a sandwich <laughs> thing, but I didn't. Um, and you, I felt like I needed to prove myself. And so I felt that I didn't want to show how, um, how much I didn't know. <laughs> so, so, uh, there were times where people would, uh, I would, where I would ask a question and perhaps I would not understand it, but still go ahead with it. Um, mm -hmm. and that showed me up far more than it would if I said, I don't understand that. Could you explain it to me differently? Um, you know, uh, so, so yeah, just, just, if you don't understand something, ask again until you understand yeah. it, until it's been told to you in a way that you understand. Um, and it might not be your fault. It might be the way that someone is telling you or something. I don't know. It's uh, so yeah. Um, I would, that's what the first one. Yeah. Uh, the other one is to, uh, <laughs> the other one is to make time for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the irony there. Yeah. So the other one is to, uh, carve a piece, portion of time for yourself and others, uh, to, that isn't anything to do with programming or web development. You need that. You need to have that sort of space for your mind to expand because mm -hmm. you're so blinkered in code and requirements. And I feel awfully guilty every time I have a com conversation with a, a loved one or, or a friend and my mind wanders to a technical problem that I was trying to solve that, that day. Turning off from my day is very, very difficult because my day doesn't finish when my freelance finishes. My day finishes when I go to bed after everything is queued up to be encoded. And mm -hmm. that isn't healthy. That's not healthy at all. You need, you need a, a downtime. You need to go and read a book. You need to go for a walk. You need to do something. This yeah. is one of the reasons why we have, um, we, we're getting a dog because, um, that will enable me to take the dog out for a walk and, you know, have that time. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, from a bit of experience, it is fantastic. And walking, I find very therapeutic anyway, before we even had a dog, mm -hmm. I used to, if I needed to de-stress or something like that, I'd quite often go for a walk. But you will probably find, and uh, I'm pretty sure you probably find this already with other things, mm -hmm. when you're walking, even if you're walking with your dog, you can be in the woods anywhere. Quite often, you'll be, all of a sudden, there'll be something that flags at the back of your head. Be, that's what the problem was. Yeah. And things like that. So that's, I think, particularly in art, you know, in, in the type of roles we do, where it is, um, you know, that problem solving. Yes. Um, and, and I think this is any problem solving yeah. type of industry. Yeah. In the back of your mind's always going to be working at it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I've got two technical ones. First is to, um, if you're not learning how to unit test and test your code, then do so. Um, that's such a big thing. And it was so, you know, this, th these things aren't, they weren't taught at co course colleges or at university when I was there. I'm hoping they are now, but, uh, it's so important. Um, and the second one, the last one, um, oh, I forget what that was. Um, oh yes. The last one, the last piece of advice is it's okay to put things in production, which hasn't been coded in a way that is fantastic. If it does the job, it does the job. If you can allocate time after you've done that, after you've put it to production to refactor it, then that's fantastic. If you don't have the time to refactor it afterwards, then you should refactor it before you put it in production, I should say. But it's okay to put code in production that isn't, doesn't follow every single good practice. You can go really purist and not put anything out, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it is okay. Uh, and I know this is a bit weird because I'm all about good practice and stuff, but with the freelance, I'm seeing bad code all over the place, you know, and it works, you yeah. know, it works. So yeah, that's, it, that's, it, I would say it's probably better if you at least have some tests. Oh, so sure. you know for sure it's working, but yeah. I well, that's why I said the tests first, because as long as the tests show that it works, if it's yeah. an acceptance test, if it shows that it's acceptable, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter how bad the code is. It can be refactored later. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're my final two. <laughs>
very sage advice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so. I will now hand the uh, the reins back to you, oh. sir, because I think I've grilled you enough. Thank you very much. I think you've been put through the ringer enough on that, so I'll um, I'll as it's your show, oh. I will let you close. Lovely. Thank you very much, Jess. That was a that was that was lovely. Um, I'll get you back sometime. <laughs> 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 oh brilliant brilliant no thank you very much it was it was lovely to speak to you again um it was uh it was really good to to go through that i can't believe how old i am that's nuts but uh cool thank you ever so much everybody for watching on the youtubes listening on the podcasts um just have a awesome awesome evening or whatever you're doing um be kind to each other and i'll see you again happy coding everyone cheers bye